Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. All right, today is going to be epic proportion. Freezer meal making day in our home. I am so excited. I've been looking forward to this day for a long time. You guys know that I've been making a lot of meals. I make a lot of meals in our household for 10 people every single day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and that can be tiring. You know, mama's working. People that don't have kids, you know it's a lot of work to go to work and do things and then have to come home and make dinner on top of it. And think about and the ones that are home doing breakfast and lunches every day. It's a lot of work that you're spending in this kitchen. And I love it. I love doing meal prep, do enjoy it. But when I spend so much time in here, when I know that I can be doing other things, that's kind of hard for me. So you know what, I'm like, I need to do a freezer meal prep day so that most of my meals are prepared. You're gonna still have to do a few things to those recipes, but most, the majority of the work is done. That's what I'm going for today. So I did one of these videos about a year ago. That's how most people find me from my largest meal prep video. I'll put a link below. But what it was is it was all fewer recipes. And so a lot of those recipes are casseroles and they are creamy, sour cream, and not what we would normally eat. <laughs> So even after that, I was like, the kids were like, we're sick of casseroles. I'm like, oh, I'm sick of casseroles. <laughs> so we rationed those casseroles out for like two, three months after that because they were just not the foods that we normally eat. But today is going to be real foods that we eat all the time. And I'm excited for it because I'm going to plan on making 50 dinners. 50 dinners, yes, 50 dinners for our family of 10 right now. And by doing that, I'm going to have the bases done in the freezer, and all I got to do is pull them out, put them in the pressure cooker, put them in the oven, whatever I got to do to, to finish them up. But the majority of those dinners are done. We're also going to do breakfast for a month. We're also going to do lunch for a month, which is awesome. I'm excited because this means that I don't have to be in this kitchen every single day. Today I am. Like right now, if you look at my clock, it is 1.30 in the morning on a Friday. What, Amy? Did you say 1.30 in the morning? Yes, I did. 1.30 in the morning. I went to bed last night and I was like, I knew I got up today and I'm like, okay, when I woke my ass, that's when I'm gonna get up. Well, 12.30 came, one o'clock came and I got up and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna get up and go do it. So here I am. Yesterday we did a lot of meat prep. So the meat cooking is what takes a lot of your day. So I didn't wanna do that today. Today I wanted to be dedicated to putting dinners together so I can just get it out, get it done. But today's a working day for me so I hire Lauren twice a week as you guys know and her day is today. So I thought today would be a great day to do that because she's got the kids. When I'm doing these freezer meal props, I love doing them. People watch and they're like, oh, your kids should help. My kids do help, you're gonna see that in just a second. But I like to just, do you ever get a big project and you just wanna go, okay, I can do this, I can do this. And you just wanna zone in and get it done. That's how I feel about some big giant meal preps. And my kids help, oh, they help. My regular viewers, you know my kids help and they do things all the time. But when I do these videos, I'm like, I wanna show mamas that this can be done. You can do this. You might not have to do as big as I do. Oh, not very often you have to do as big as I do, but what I'm doing today, scale that down to, for your size family and you are only gonna have to do it one time a month. It is gonna save so much time of your life that you're gonna be able to enjoy, spend time with your family. You're gonna even, you might even go sit on your couch for a little bit and drink a cup of coffee. What, maybe watch TV, read a book. I don't even know moms. It'll just free up your time and you can have more time to do things for you and for your family enjoying time so that's why we do this so today is a great day to do it lauren's gonna have the kids later on greg's gonna come and get them for the rest of the evening depending on how long i need it and so it is gonna be a good day i'm sure they're gonna come in i got some burrito rolling i know i'm gonna do a bunch of that so they said they'd come in and help me today so what we did yesterday we did all of our meat prep so i'm going to show you here everything we made there is a lot of meat i walked away yesterday had to go out a few places and everywhere I went, I just sprayed my vanilla body spray on. And I said, I smell like, my husband's like, you smell like meat and vanilla. <laughs> I'm like, I know, I'm like, he's like, it's kind of smells good. I'm like, yuck. So this is what we did yesterday for our meat prep. Oh! 
Now that took a lot of our time of our day because I was in and out all day, but I just took the entire day because to get the meat done. So today I will not have to cook everything. So everything is ready. And then we also chopped up all our veggies. I put them in my food processor to like season my meat. It, chopping them is fun. When you're gonna put them like in a dish, just food process them up, it's awesome. So see this. I get so caught up in the middle, thinking of drowning in those blue eyes. I'm losing sight cause I am falling. I'm so deep down, deep down. And it's not a lie that I die. I can't hide what this is. Oh, yeah, I keep drowning in those blue eyes. And you can tell me all of your lies. All right, then we were on a roll, and I was like, girls, let's make our lunch sandwiches. So what we did yesterday. Alright, and that's a lot of our lunches. That that takes a lot of time, just chopping and do it. And those hands, we got it done. Getting, those are already in the freezer, breezing up, which is awesome. We put those actually downstairs. I'm trying to keep this freezer, I have a big giant one in my kitchen here, empty so that we can put, just, just start packing them in. I'm just gonna pack them in everywhere and be able to show you at the end. So what I did, let me show you. So when you have 50 pounds of ground beef and you have five huge, probably 15, 20 pound bags of chicken. Where do you thaw it at? My coolers are small. Let me show you my tiny coolers. I have these coolers right here. So they are not gonna fit in here. So in here, what I did in here, let me show you. Yesterday, all my meal prep is inside here. I put ice packs and my bacon and my beef and my chicken is all in here. This is how I kept it cold overnight. So inside, oh yeah, smell that meat. <laughs> This is all my meat, which is awesome. Then what I did, there's another one there. This is my makeshift cooler. Okay, this is a reflective blanket and I use this for grocery shopping. What I did is I put all my, I laid it on the ground and I put all my frozen meat on top. Oh yeah, look at that. It's all inside there. There's all my meat. It's all inside bags in there. So this is a makeshift cooler. And what that did is it allowed me to thaw my meats so that today I can use them because you have to have thawed meat to make burgers and meat patties, things like that, and also my chicken so I can bread it and things like that. So I'm like, I need a big area. I don't have a big enough empty refrigerator. So that works. So get yourself, I think that blanket was $10 on Amazon. I have it in my link in my Amazon store. I just laid that down and stacked, and I had to put that bench around it. I had one on the other side because I was afraid I was gonna wake up and Maxine was gonna be in there eating my raw meat, but she didn't, she didn't even touch it. <laughs> so. It's all wrapped up, so it was all good and safe. So that is how I thawed all my food. So now we're just gonna get into making food. Are you ready to get going with our food? Oh yeah, we're just gonna go. I got my coffee. It's early, it is 1.40 in the morning on Friday. I know, super early, but we're just gonna go with our day. We're gonna get this done. 50 plus meals, I'm sure, for our large family for the month. Okay, let's go. I'll be
All right, the first thing I'm gonna mix up is jambalaya. I know this is not the correct way to make jambalaya. I don't do shrimp allergy to it. So we do it, we had a friend make it for us one time and it was so good and it was sausage, kielbasa, and shredded chicken and the rice and the spices with the green peppers and onions. It was so good, we love this dish. This is one of our favorite dishes. We actually just had it this week. So I'm gonna make two of those. All I do is right in the bag, to add two cups of rice and H2O because I'm gonna add my chicken bouillon and then all I gotta do is put it in the pressure cooker and do like a regular rice setting and that'll be done in literally 20 minutes. So I'm gonna put all that in a bag. The next one is a recipe that one of my viewers from that last freezer meal prep, she suggested, and we still love it to this day. It's Janita Warfield and it's yellow rice and chicken, black beans, corn. It's delicious, that's what I call it, her casserole. Janita's casserole, so I'm gonna try to make that now. So just sit with me, talking to the night until the morning, building cat mystery. I don't think I ever wanna go come closer next to me. Trying to find another way to say this, but I think, I think we were meant to be. All right, another rice dish. These are all ones that we're gonna do in the pressure cooker. You can put them in the pressure cooker or you can put them and cook them on the stove. You can also bake them in the oven. I just do the pressure cooker because it's quick. So I'm gonna do cheesy chicken and broccoli. And everything cause you're stuck on my mind. So just sit with me Talking to the night until the morning Building cat mystery I don't think I ever want to go Come closer next to me Try to find another way to see The next dish I'm going to make is Chicken Eddie. We haven't made this a long, long time. Back in the day when the kids were Older kids were little, we used to make that it's just a different spaghetti, chicken based. So we're gonna put that together now. Then when I go to serve it, I'm gonna boil a package of spaghetti noodles and just put the sauce on top and it's delicious. But I think, I think we were meant to be. Oh, we were meant to be. Oh, we were meant to be. The next thing I'm gonna mix together is some Mexican stuffed shells. I call them Mexican. I know it might not be Mexican to some of you, but it's Mexican to us. We're gonna mix all the ingredients together here, kind of see how it looks, and then I've got my stuffed shells boiling over there, and then we'll just stuff the shells, layer in a pan.
All right, I did not plan on that making four pans at all. So for those of you that are gonna make some stuffed shells, know that one box will fill two pans. I had four and I still have a bowl of noodles over there I'm gonna leave for the kids to eat. So that's plenty. So I had to stretch my little topping a little bit more. So I just added, it's cream of chicken soup, taco seasoning. So I added a little bit more milk to it and kind of add a little bit of chicken bouillon and thinned it out a little bit. As long as you have enough liquid in your pan, when you go to cook these and bake them in the oven, I'm gonna pour the sauce in there, then I'm gonna sprinkle cheese on them. When I go to bake in the oven, thaw them completely, and then keep them covered in their foil because if you keep them uncovered, they're gonna get really dry. So keep them covered completely, don't even open them, and just let them bake you know, for 30 minutes until they're done, depending if it's frozen or not. And then um, that way they'll be nice and soft, but this is, looks good, delicious. when you put foil over your like pastas and lasagnas and stuff like that sometimes when you they've been in the freezer for a while they'll get like the foil will break down on your food you don't want that so i put a piece of wax paper sheets you get a whole box of these at sam's cup real cheap on top first and then put the foil on the next dish i'm gonna make is creamy chicken breast this is super simple Good, nice company meal. Serve some mashed potatoes and veggies. I'm gonna put chicken in a pan, put some um, slices of cheese on top. I'm mean, Usually we use like provolone, but I have a lot of Monterey Jack. So I'm actually, it's Monterey. Yeah, Monterey Jack cheese. So I'm gonna use this on top, sprinkle some stuffing on top, and then pour mushroom soup on top. I'm gonna thin mine out a little bit so it's nice and creamy when it bakes. All right, so what I did is I added one can, usually I make my own cream of mushroom soup, you guys have seen me do that before, but today I knew I didn't wanna do that because I have a lot of food to do. And that's okay, you pick and choose what you wanna do. So what I did is I added um, one can of cream of chicken, or cream of mushroom soup, milk, and then I wanna stretch it. So I added um, onions and then I pureed some mush mushrooms yesterday. So much easier than food processor. You can chop them up, but it just takes time. Puree them up, it tastes delicious. They're in there, just what they do in the soup. They puree it as well. And then I put a little garlic, and then this tastes really good. So I'm gonna pour this on top and then put these in the freezer. All right, the next one I'm gonna mix up is gonna be for chicken parmesan. We love this dressing. That a herb dressing. This is really good. I get the, the, this at the discount store for 79 cents. Greatest flavor ever. So I just put chicken, and then when I go to cook it, I cook it in the skillet, and this absorbs in the chicken. It's so, so good. And then we do celentani pasta, then we do some spaghetti sauce with it. So this is really good. So I'm just gonna pour these. I'm doing three bottles for two bags. I'm gonna split it between the two. You never can have enough sauce. And then I'm gonna put chicken in the bags. Let's go to the freezer, it's easy. All right, the next thing I'm gonna mix together is gonna be for chicken gyros. Love chicken gyros. I got that good pita bread the other day in the grocery haul, and I bought tzatziki dressing at Aldi. Thank goodness. Sam's Club used to sell a huge one. They don't, maybe they will in the summer, I don't know. So all I'm gonna do, I bought chicken tenders for this, so they were smaller strips. You could buy regular chicken and cut it. I just didn't wanna cut it today, that's okay. Save your money where you need to, I don't care about that. So I'm gonna put that in a bag, and then the marinade is gonna be Greek yogurt, I'm looking at my list. Greek yogurt, lemon juice, olive oil, vinegar, salt, pepper, and oregano. And leave it in there and just let it go in the freezer. And then when you go to make it, you can take it out and then you can grill it. You can put it on your stove and cook in the skillet, whatever you want to do. And then serve it with pita bread, warm pita bread. Put on a skillet and let it puff up a little bit. Oh, so good. And then do some um, purple onions, tomatoes, tzatziki dressing, peppers, whatever you want to throw on there. So, so good. So I'm going to do two of those because those are good.
All right, when you're making your marinades for your chicken, don't be afraid to over season. It's okay to over season, especially with the good ingredients because it's gonna make that flavor come out in that chicken. So I'm gonna go put these in the freezer and move on to the next one. I'm down to all my raw chicken is gone. Thank goodness, I don't like touching raw chicken. So I had two more meals left over. This will be plenty of extra meals. So I was like, what can I make with it? What can you do? You can grill chicken. Chicken on the grill is awesome. It's getting warm out, it'll be perfect. So I found this in my closet, in my cupboard here, and it's Mediterranean, I don't even know what they call it, kimichuri, the stickers over the thing. Someone told me this, but basically it says parsley, garlic, basil, and thyme. I'm like, those would be delicious. So I'm just gonna pour this on top, add a little bit of vinegar and lemon juice, and there's a marinade and a little bit of olive oil. A marinade without having to do anything. I'm also gonna put, no, I'm not gonna put the onions in. That's perfect. I'm gonna pour this in here, and then we've got two more meals. All right, so I'm done with my chicken meals. I've pre-written everything all out for myself right here. So how I was gonna do it. So basically I'm down here to my, my little chicken ones, the casseroles that I did, and then I had my raw chicken. So now I'm done with chicken and I still have this much chicken left. I mean, I just put some, some back. So I'm gonna make some soups and stuff with this too. So I thought I'm gonna take that out, but I thought what else can I make? Because that's a lot of chicken. So I'm gonna do like a honey sesame chicken. We used to do it where it was raw and then just put it in the pressure cooker. But now that's already done, it'll just be a heat up and serve over pasta or rice dish, which is awesome. And so it's a gather your fragment up <laughs> type thing because I have plenty of fragments. So I found this toasted sesame. I bought this one time and I'm like, it tastes really good. It's basically oil, sugar, sesame oil vinegar, sesame seeds, salt, pepper, and ginger, which will be great. And then I also have sesame ginger dressing, which is not my favorite on salad. So I thought I'm gonna use this. I actually have two bottles of this. And then I'm gonna put some sesame seeds and honey. I'm gonna make like a little dressing, like a saucy. It'll mix and taste, put some garlic in there, and then um, pour it on my chicken, and that actually will be done. Just take it out and heat it up. All right, that took some figuring because it was a little bit zingier with, with that dressing in there. So I had to tweak it a little bit, but I basically tasted it till it tasted good. But I have a recipe for honey sesame chicken and basically it's garlic, onion, um, ginger, sesame seed oil, and, or soy, and soy sauce, and then honey. So this was just gathering the fragments up, but I think I got it pretty good. So I'm gonna pour this in the bag. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is put together kind of like my meat for my pizza. Um, I'm gonna show you here, yesterday I made my pizza crust. I'll show you those right here. Did you pack the flashlight, the blanket, and the mat? It's a real adventure, the trail you're looking at. I'm glad you came for a while, I thought you might be bailing. Is that the same yellow shirt you used to wear? But a thousand years seem like almost no time now. This guitar right here, do you still remember how? I played for you, I was crappy, but you sang along and I thought you knew I could die to keep you near. We've got a falling tent, it's my third Useless words. What you said, what I said, that might have made it worse. We're here again at the same spot where we kissed the first time. I swear my pain is far away, long gone by now. We've got a bottle of tent. It's my third.
So that's enough pizza for two times. And what I'm gonna do is I have pizza sauce in a can in the cupboard, so I don't have to worry about putting that in anything. And I have lots of cheese. So I'm gonna do that. So now what I'm gonna do, I would love to say that I could just keep the meat, like I bought pepperoni here. I'd love to say I could just put this in the refrigerator, but people are gonna see this and be like, ooh, pepperoni, I'm gonna eat this. So I'm gonna put some in a bag for two meals worth along with some chopped up ham and I also have bacon. So I'm gonna put those away and then we go to serve the pizza. We can chop up some onions and put it on top, put Alfredo sauce or pizza sauce and then we have the toppings for the pizza because there's nothing worse than trying to make pizza and you go, I don't have anything to put on it. So we're gonna put those together. It's 5.30 a.m. Let's be the kids who left Get in trouble again That star's got nothing on you That one's brand new Still it's got nothing So when you're, you're layering your um, meat ingredients, the ham is going to be watery if it thaws. So put that in the bottom. My bacon is going to be in the middle. That's going to be like a nice barrier and then the pepperoni is dry on top. So this will be enough meat for the pizzas for sure, and I have cheese. So I'm gonna put these in the freezer. Now I put this back in the refrigerator and the kids can just eat it and I won't have to be like, don't eat the pepperoni. So, all right, another thing marked off our list. All right, the next thing I'm gonna mix up is sausage, red beans, and rice. I'm gonna do this completely different than the original recipe is, but basically I put kielbasa and then I'm gonna put, I have a whole big giant can of chili beans, Mexican chili beans, and so I'm gonna pour those in there. And then you need um, some green pepper and onion, garlic, the flavoring there and then I'm gonna add some petite diced tomatoes and then you need a little bit of something for a tomato sauce so I have a huge can of tomato paste tomato paste you can make into tomato juice or tomato sauce whatever you have so if you can find tomato paste it's cheaper this whole container was two dollars so yeah that's really good for us and so I'm just gonna take a little bit out put it in the bag here now when I go to reheat it I might have to add some more liquid it'll be more concentrated I could add it in the bag but it makes the bag really full because this is basically a complete meal you can add red beans to it whatever you have I just have the, the chili beans because I got them cheap so I'm so they love it this is one of our kids favorite meals and we serve it over rice The next thing I'm put together is going to be for fried rice, beef fried rice. I'm not going to make the whole dish up because I do like to cook it on the stove. You can make it a complete meal, freeze it with the rice, but I'm just going to do it because it's quicker for me to stick on the stove and make some rice and just saute it up real quick than it is to cook for an hour in the freeze in the um, oven. So I'm going to put. I made two little bags. I'm gonna put some bacon in here. Try bacon in your fried rice. So so good. And I'm gonna put some beef in here and just um, is that it? And a little bit of onion and then that way when I go to make it we'll add um, rice cooked rice that's been cold and used the next day and some mixed vegetables and then I'm going to add sesame um, oil and soy sauce and then just fry up and then do some eggs in it really simple so this is just gonna go in here so I got the meat for it Okay, the next thing I'm gonna make is pad thai, the base for it. This is something we have loved to go and eat. We found a place local that has it, and then we just went for Lauren's, um, when we had her wedding dress, and we went to Thai food noodle. Oh my goodness, so, so good, nothing compares. So one of my viewers, we made it one time, and they're like, that's not how you make it. So they gave me the recipe of how to make it, and he used tamarind sauce, and I actually got some on Amazon. So it's tamarind sauce, fish sauce, and oyster. That's what it was. I'll make it show you, but I'm going to put together some packets for it. I have tons of noodles. So I have an Asian stir fry blend here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make three packs of this. I'm just gonna divide this into three and put it in the bag along with some already cooked beef. Then when we go to make it, we serve it with noodles and there's only, usually when I buy it, it's only a little bit of veggies. Then you add bean sprouts, peanuts, and the lemon. So, so good. It's one of my favorite dishes is pad thai. So. Have thought so I'm gonna put these in the bags here so they're ready to go
that tie is not something that is enjoyed by everybody in our family. So there's smaller packets, but when I go get it at the restaurant, it's mostly the noodles. So most of my kids just like the noodles and it's just a little bit of the veggies. So they, they, chip, they do very frugal um, veggies and meat, but now I got three more of these. And remember when I bought that big giant beef roast? If you go back to my grocery haul, I bought it for $50 and I'm like, is this worth getting it versus all the cut up meat? Oh, it's so worth it. I have so much shredded beef from that roast. It's crazy for the price. And I have raw meat here. This stuff costs me the same amount as, um, we're gonna be doing this for something else. I just had it in the freezer, as that humongous roast. And I have a lot of beef, which is awesome. So yeah, so that big giant roast was the way to go. Okay, let's put these in the freezer. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna put together is for French onion sandwiches. I was gonna use my raw meat and then say, okay, just cook it in the pressure cooker and then shred it. I still have some meat here. So I'm gonna put this in a bag and then I'm gonna put a bunch of onions in there and then um, beef, beef bouillon and garlic, pepper, I think that's it. And then when I go to make it, we'll just let it kind of heat up and simmer with all that good oniony flavor. And then we'll strain it a little bit. We'll serve it on good onion crusty rolls with a piece of cheese. It's so good. left so I'm like what can I make of that? I'm gonna make more two more fried rice packets because we like that and it'll be good in the freezer. Okay, I got a lot of raw meat here so I'm like what am I gonna do with this? So I'm gonna make two things of bulgogi. One of my back that last big giant freezer meal. Someone gave me a recipe and it was like Sprite and some onions and peppers and I'm looking here, carrot, soy, sesame seed oil and garlic. I think that's it and that was really good. So I'm gonna do two of those and then I'm gonna do two bags of the strips that are in here for the beef fajitas because I have chicken fajita meat so that way we can make some fajitas. Yes, you saw me correctly. Add a bottle of Sprite twist up to it. I don't know why. I know when I um, looked at the recipes, when I was copying them from everybody, I, like I wrote it down and then I went back later. I'm like, is what I say Sprite? And I never looked it back up because there was like literally hundreds and hundreds of recipes that you guys gave me. And so then I, I kind of Googled it and they're like, yeah, some people use Sprite. So the fizziness in it and the sweetness in it, I don't know. So now, all right, my list, I'm getting done. My list is, I've got all of this side done and then extra. So now I'm gonna go over here and go do this side now. So, all right, we're moving. It is going up five o'clock right now. So what do we start at one, about 1.30 to 1.45. So not bad, we're getting there. Feeling good, got my coffee. Have a little bit more coffee today. We went to Starbucks and had an extra Starbucks yesterday, so I saved it for today. So, okay, I'm gonna put all this meat in the freezer. All right, I'm gonna mix up my ground beef dishes right now. Great way to season your ground beef is to add your veggies right into it. I like to puree. People are like, don't puree, but it makes it really tiny and you can add it to your beef and it tastes so good. Usually I do a veggie mixture. I put onions, green peppers, mushrooms, spinach, carrots, whatever I have, zucchini, anything you have on hand, puree it. Like this puree spinach in the freezer. freezer. It's real tiny. Normally I add that to my ground beef right after why well, it's in the big giant mixing bowl. But as you saw, my big giant mixing bowl was so full, there was no room. So all I added was onion to the beef because there was so much. So what I'm gonna do, when I add my beef to my dishes, I'm gonna put some spinach in it. I have a little, I have mushrooms all pureed up so then nobody knows there's a mushroom in their thing. And then I'll put some garlic in there too. That's a great way to get some extra nutrients in your beef without like the kids going, what is that green stuff? And it tastes great. So first I'm gonna mix up my hamburger stroganoff. This we've been doing forever and it's so good. So let's put that together.
When you put sour cream in the freezer, it gets clumpy. So if you can kind of mix it up with your cream sauce and all the little ingredients you have in here, when you heat it, it won't be chunky. So, but if I left a blob, it would kind of separate. So if you kind of, you could mix this all up beforehand in a bowl. It's just easier to fling the bag around a few times. So um, this is good. Two of these will be great meals. And I have the pasta in the pantry and all I'll do is cook that and then thaw this and pour it on top. And this is a very good favorite meal in our household. So I just added the um, cream of mushroom soup. I added those, those veggie spices in there, the onions and mushrooms and spinach. And then I added sour cream. And then I added a little bit of red pepper, garlic, and a little bit of beef bouillon, just a little bit to give it a little bit of beefy flavor. So perfect. All right, next one I'm gonna do, let's look. Let's move on to two Sloppy Joes. Sloppy Joes are favorite in our household as well. We do not like homemade Sloppy Joes. I don't know, my husband grew up on canned Sloppy Joe, so we just buy canned Sloppy Joe. There's only a few things that we will buy like that I won't make homemade, because we don't like. One is Alfredo sauce, only like jar Alfredo sauce. I mean, I like homemade, but family only likes jarred, and then Sloppy Joe mix. I don't know, it's just the family. Normally I buy Aldi's brand or real sloppy joe sauce. That was Walmart's, a little zingy. So I don't know, I just put a little onion there to help mask it, I guess, we'll see. Okay, next one's gonna be three things for taco meat. I'm just gonna put the meat in a bag with some taco seasoning. Next thing I'm gonna mix up is smoky bacon sloppy joe cups. Now, I just told you we don't like sloppy joe mixture, but this one's a little bit different. This uses barbecue sauce, mustard, garlic, onion, and bacon. Probably what's in the sloppy joe can stuff, right? I don't know, my kids just say, I like can stuff. So I have a humongous container of barbecue sauce. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna make the sloppy joe bacon cups, and then I'm gonna also do, in a minute, a tater tot casserole, and I, but I have plenty of tater tots, so I'm like, I'll do a sloppy joe, smoky bacon tater tot casserole. <laughs> so I'm basically gonna make, the in the sloppy joe cups, what you do is you make the liquid mixture, which is the barbecue sauce, mustard, garlic, onion, that kind of thing, and then you add some bacon to it, and then you put that with meat. So then, then what you do is you take a biscuit, and you kind of roll it out flat. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save three cans of biscuits for this recipe. Roll them out flat and kind of take a cup and kind of make like a little divot in it. So it goes down a little bit and then I'm gonna pour, then you scoop out some of this mixture onto the um, biscuit. And then you put it in the oven and bake it at 350. You can sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top if you want for about 20 minutes until the biscuits are brown. And that's really, they really like this meal. This is a favorite one I haven't made in a long time. So then the sauce that I have, I'll have extra. And then I'm gonna do it in the bottom of a pan and do like a sloppy joe tear shot casserole as well. So I'm gonna mix up my little sauce mixture first. Okay, so yeah, saw me add brown sugar to this. It depends on what your barbecue sauce is. This Heinz one is a little sp like zingy. So if you bought like the good, what's the good one? I don't even know. The one good one that you know, it's it's got sugar already in it. So I just added that and I put spinach in there instead of in my meat. Yes, I did. It's more veggies in there. And then the mustard and garlic and this is perfect. So now I'm gonna mix this up with my beef and put it in the bag for beef. This one, oh, put bacon. Forgot the bacon. Don't forget the bacon, Amy. We'll put the bacon in the bag with the beef. You're like a circle that floats around me, keeping me safe and sound. And when I fall, you tied a rope to me. You're blessing me every day. I was down with an illusion, like a sparrow with broken wings. But now I shine with your reflection on Getting back up on my feet. That you showed up was written in 
when you've got a pan that's really full, like this is gonna be full when you bake, it's gonna kind of bubble up. Turn the edges up a little bit so that it doesn't go all over your oven. All right, so one, the next one I'm gonna make is tater tot casserole. We've been making this forever. Haven't made it in a long time though. You are a statement, fix, but like a bomb. I get to push myself to victory. You make me win. You got me loose and set me free. All right, the next one I'm gonna do is some stuffed shells. And so I've already got my noodles done. I had those sitting, I cooked those right away. So I found a bunch of frozen mozzarella cheese in my freezer from a while ago. You can freeze cheese forever in a day. So, and it separates real good and you can reuse it. That's why when you see me pour it on stuff, it looks like it's all chunks. It's because it's in the freezer. So I actually have mozzarella cheese. I have a thing of Parmesan cheese. So I'm actually gonna put that in there as well. We're gonna make some cheesy mixtures here because I have a lot, so I'll probably have, extra, I know I'm gonna have a lot because I'll probably do some kind of, there's a million dollar casserole dish that you can do or something. There's a million dollar casserole dish that you can do. We haven't made it a long time. I'll probably mix it up with this because this will be a good little meal here. Maybe I'll make that for dinner tonight. Hmm, that might be easy because you know when you do freezer meal prep, you don't want to cook anything. I might make that for tonight. That'll probably be good. All right, so we're gonna put this in here and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add my spices and everything in here. Stuff my shells, should I put the meat in here? Hmm, no, I'm gonna keep the meat separate. Stuff my shells, because that's my favorite. Ron says, do lasagna or do layer. It's okay, this is only gonna, I'm gonna have two, well, I'm gonna have four pans of these actually. It is way easier just to do lasagna noodles, but we're kinda tired of lasagna and this will be something different and special. For a treat. Okay, let's mix this up. break not very long literally 10 minutes cleaned up everything I, mean, I still have stuff up but put away a lot of stuff I don't need cleaned up put my dishes away and then I was looking at my list and I realized how much um, stuff I need to put in the freezer for pizza so I got two containers out this will be enough for those pizzas because we like white sauce as well as red so if I do one that'll cover two pizzas and that'll be twice during the month so I'm gonna put some of this pizza sauce here into the containers here and then I'm gonna come down here and then um, I also need one for spaghetti sauce so I'll just do one like this I also need one for meatballs because I already have the meatballs made so I need to make sure that I have some sauce for that this is really fine size this is a um it says pizza sauce but it's kind of like a chunky it tastes really it's got big chunks of diced tomatoes in it that's what I put on the bottom of the stuffed shells so it's got all this in there 
So it's actually really good. So I'm probably gonna mix that up a little bit. Actually, I'll just put that in there. Hmm, I feel like I need to puree that because I feel like the kids are gonna go, I don't like chunky spaghetti sauce. Let's put this in the blender to make everybody happy. And then I'll put it in a container and I'll have two of them for the meatball sauce. Okay, so I also need, I got my two for the pizza, so I'll put those in there. And I also need, I'm gonna need three of these bigger containers. It's gonna be for chicken parmesan. So two for chicken parmesan and one, I'm gonna get another one, for the meatballs. And that'll take care of all of my taco, or that'll take care of all my spaghetti sauce. So I'm gonna put this in the blender because it's got chunks of tomatoes. It's delicious, but I know the kids will be like, I don't like chunks of tomatoes. So we're gonna get that out right now. All right, we're doing really good. Uh, one of the next dishes I'm gonna make is a guamki casserole. Now, I apologize, Grandma Sandy and Papa Joe, my husband's parents, if this uh, offends you making this. Normally, this is the meal that was served the first time I met my, um, or actually, I had first time I had dinner with my husband's family. We had this thing called a guamki. People are like, what's a guamki? It's a Polish dish, and what it is, is it's a cabbage stuffed with um, rice and ground beef delicious and then they put <laughs> that's delicious right then they put sauerkraut in there and then they put sausage in it and it is so so good back in the day I didn't enjoy it as much as I do now I love guamkis love them but the problem is we make them like once or twice a year but you have to like take this head of cabbage plop it in the water so that the leaves all come up it's a little bit of a process so it would have never made the freezer meal list because I'm not gonna take the time to roll cabbage right now and make the stuffed cabbage. So, one of my viewers uh, recommended doing layering it like a casserole. I'm like, oh. so I told my husband, I'm like, I make it easy, go up get casserole. He's like, oh no, no, don't do that. <laughs> so, I'm hoping that it's gonna be better than, we're not gonna have guamkis, honey. So, let's enjoy the casserole. So, I'm basically gonna layer some sauerkraut, some rice, some ground beef, some cabbage, sausage, all in a casserole, and then bake it. Oh, it is so, so good. So we're gonna see how that goes over with the family, but I'm gonna make it because then at least we have it. So I gotta get my, just remember, I gotta get rice out here. So I'm gonna get some rice out and the hamburger and it just cooks. It is so good. It smells up your kitchen, but it tastes so good. Then we serve it with cucumber salad, shred, um, like, like you do finely shred like a, no, cucumber salad where you take cucumber slices really thin. I use them out like on a grater and then do sour cream and some salt. Oh, so good. So I'm gonna chop my cabbage up right now and then I'm gonna do two pans and so I'm gonna layer, um, I don't know how I'm gonna do my layer first. So sour crown on the bottom, put some hamburger, it's already cooked, so I'm gonna use that. And then put some rice, onion, cabbage, some sausage slices, and then keep layering it. Oh yeah, gonna love this. All right, that's one of those casseroles that is so, so good. It's definitely gonna cook down, so I overfilled it because that cabbage is gonna get soft and it's gonna go smaller, but the rice is gonna puff up a little bit, but when you bake this, definitely put something underneath it. I know that when it went, I went to my um, in-law's home for the first time, theirs had overflowed into the bottom of the oven and it actually caught on fire. So, yes, it is so good. I'm like, and yes, we used a whole entire gallon and then a container of sauerkraut. So delicious. So I'm gonna put this in the freezer and then I'm on to one more beef dish, which is awesome. All right, I gotta do some kind of burrito casserole of some sort. So I'm gonna do garlic beef enchiladas. So this is something we've made for a long time. We enjoy it. I'm gonna mix it together in this bowl and then I'll put the recipe on the screen and then I'm going to, we're gonna make individual burritos but not like a burrito casserole. So this is garlic beef enchiladas. Okay, I made that completely different than my original recipe. My original recipe is hamburger, onion, 
flour, chili powder, salt, cumin, and a can of diced tomatoes. You can go to my blog, plainandnotsoplain.com and read it. This one I just had some that little container of green chili, so I put that in there. A can of the petite diced tomatoes. I put some taco seasoning in there, a little bit of salt. That tastes good. So now I gotta go over to my stove and I have to cook the sauce here to make it a little bit thickened. Yes, we're gonna have to make a little butter and flour sauce. We may be forced to cause a scene, make some trouble, baby. So garlicky, whoo, garlic, it's gonna be delicious. I'm gonna make two because I have more sauce. I'm just gonna put a little bit more meat in here and kind of mix up a, some, a little bit more meat mixture. All right, so I've got all my ground beef that's cooked meals done. The next one will be the raw one. So I still have entire bag of meat which is awesome so what I'm gonna do is I still have to make beef burritos and those are gonna be part of my lunch part so I'm gonna actually just take out two pounds put in a bowl so I can do that later and the rest I'm gonna put in containers so that I already have cooked ground beef for when we need it I don't know in a month or two probably two months from now Okay, now I've got two big giant 10 pound rolls of hamburger. So what I'm gonna do is make burgers. I'm gonna make a um, Euro, a Euro burger out of one roll, and the other one I'm gonna do bacon and onion, and then we'll put cheese on it as we make it. So in my meat mixture, I'm gonna put salt and pepper, and onion, and bacon. I only have minced onion. I didn't buy fresh onions because I was like, I bought some purple ones, but that's to make with the meals. But I had all those frozen onions, so I'm like, oh, that's plenty. Well, I'm kind of running out. I'm like, that's not good, so <laughs> no big deal. We'll just use dried onions. That's what you do when you don't have something. Oh, and I actually have mushrooms. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this mushroom puree in here too. So I have the mushrooms, onion, and bacon, and that tastes really good. <laughs> bad thing about burgers is that you can't taste how they are with all the stuff but it sure they smell delicious that bacon oh so good so what I'm gonna do is we have I'm gonna make a couple big patties I'm gonna get smart here when I make my burgers because I always make the big size then I'm always off so I'm gonna make a big patty put a couple holes like that in it because when you go to cook it it won't have uh, it'll cook a lot faster so I'm gonna plan two burgers for Greg one for me, then I'm gonna do a couple small ones so that they fit in the little pan here. And this is gonna be for the kids because they won't have a humongous one. And then put a piece of wax paper in between, and then that way you've got them. So as long as I've got a couple, like four big ones, that'll be two for Greg, one for me. Evan will probably just have one. And then Jaden, she'll have a normal one, and then that way I can figure out how many for all the kids. So I'm gonna keep making my patties. They're doing great, it's getting, the kids will almost be waking up here and I'm just, I have the windows up but I can't have the kitties outside. <laughs> um, I'll be getting, my dinners are, this, the hamburgers are the last thing that I have to do for meals, for dinners. I'm still going, trust me, for dinners. And then the rest is gonna be breakfast and lunch. So it's, I'm glad I got up early. Even if I am done early and can rest, that'll be awesome. I mean, I gotta edit the video too and the video is a little, the video is going to be long too so all right we're going to keep making some patties here you can also put cheese in these i just don't do cheese because Jaden doesn't do cheese and then that way if she uh wants if anybody wants it they can just put it on there okay i wash my hands
All right, so I got one more burger to make up. I figured that roll of hamburger was $10, $20. So for $10, I got a lot of really good premium burgers. If you buy those ones, like the bacon and onion ones at the store, they're $10 just for a pack. I think there's four in a pack. I don't think there's even six. So definitely worth doing it yourself. So now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some um, Euro burgers, I call them. And it's basically the hamburger, salt, pepper. I'm gonna do feta cheese. I'm gonna do some spinach. And some it's gonna have to be minced onion because it's all have a little bit of garlic and that's gonna be the feta burger and then you can serve with tzatziki dressing and just like a euro so good All right, the dinner part of my food making freezer meal is done. The only part that I didn't record was meatballs. I have two meals worth of meatballs. I had one with spaghetti, I thought I had them in the freezer, but they, I have two more of those. So let's go through my meals real quick and I'll tell you what I have. So we've got two jambalaya, two yellow rice, the Juanita one with the chicken, black beans, and corn, two of the marinated chicken breast for chicken parmesan. We have um, two of the creamy chicken breast with the stuffing on top. We have two for grilled chicken, just a grill, two of honey sesame chicken, two chicken euros. We have two cheesy chicken broccoli. We have four Mexican stuffed shells, two spaghetti chicken eddy. Um, I think it's just called chicken eddy. I wrote spaghetti chicken eddy. <laughs> and then I have two meals worth of uh, pizza crust. And then I got my sauce and all the meats. And then I have two sausage, red beans, and rice. We have four fried rice packets. We have two beef fajitas, two bulgogis, one French onion sandwiches, three beef tad, pad thai, pad thai, tad pie, all those confusing, um, two hamburger stroganoff, three taco meat, two sloppy joes, one sloppy joe tater tot casserole, one tater tot casserole, one smoky bacon, sloppy joe cups, four spaghetti stuffed shells, two garlic beef enchiladas, two guanky casseroles, um, one meatballs, which I'm gonna make like a cream mushroom gravy for that, and one meatballs for spaghetti, two things of the Euro burgers, and two of the bacon onion burgers. Guess how many meals that is? 64 meals. I have 64 completed dinners right now, completed. You have to do a few more things to them, but most part, the cooking part is done. And I've been working for about six hours. It's going on about eight o'clock right now, so about 8.30. So say I start about 1.30 to 8.30, that's seven hours. For 64 dinners for 10 people mind you that's a lot that's a, what 640 meals 640 meals in that time frame in seven hours so you can do this I know you so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on some soups that we have I need my freezers to freeze up a little bit so I'm gonna mix up a couple soups right now I'm gonna make a hot and sour soup a chicken sausage potato soup that one that I like um, potato bacon chowder I have a taco chili until I forgot. I put two things of ground beef white. Oh, and I have two extra ground beef. Um, ground beef, and then I'm gonna have stuff for tomato soup. So I'm just gonna get those out, not finish them, but just at least start them with the ingredients so that all we do is put them in the thing with some water and we're good to go. So the soups are gonna be easy. I'm just gonna go through them, tell you what I put in the bags on the screen. I don't have them to completion like tomato soup. I'm basically just gonna put tomato paste in a bag. I know. But when I go to, and some onion, a little salt, I'll put my seasonings in there. But then when I go to make it, I'm gonna have to make it with the, make the thickener with the flour and the butter, and then add the milk. And you can watch that when you watch Mama Flood to see how we make this.
All right, you see me keep adding to this chicken sausage soup. This is a really good soup just to grab any kind of leftover veggies and add it to it. So I have like a little bowl of carrots here that are kind of yucked on the outside to eat fresh. So I'm gonna chop those up and put those in here. So this soup is great. We put some of the spinach in there. I've got some sweet potatoes, some white potatoes. I didn't chop any potatoes today. I just got them out of the can. I know, it's called a little easy. Not bad though. And then I realized, I'm like, oh, there's a bowl of cabbage there. I'm like, I can use that up in here. So also gonna pour in heavy cream to this. A little bit of the, it should mix with the chicken bouillon. And then um, when I go to make this, I'll be definitely adding more water to this to, you know, make it be like soup. But this is just like the concentrate form of it. And I'm gathering fragments, having stuff in here. So I'm gonna finish chopping these up and then I'm gonna add some heavy cream and then put it in the freezer. overflow on the crunch, but that's okay. I'm gonna add liquid to this. I'm actually gonna add a lot of tomato paste real quick in here, because that'll give it a little bit of tomato. And then when I go to make it, I'll definitely add a lot of water to this. So that's the taco. So now I'm gonna mix up some hot and sour soup base. Okay, a long time ago, my husband had hot and sour soup and he absolutely loved it. He doesn't like it with the tofu, but he likes it the other way. So I've been trying to find a recipe that would mimic that. So that's what I got going on here. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. So basically I still have to prepare it. So if you wanna watch how we make it, you're definitely gonna have to watch the rest of my vlogs and see, but at least I have three packages of this for him when we make it. All right, so you saw that I did one more, two more meals of the jambalaya. I had some sausage and some chicken left over. I'm like, what am I gonna do with this? So I just made two more packages of that. It's delicious, and then I got to use up the rest of the veggies. So now I'm down to just a little pile over here of stuff I have to use up, but it's gonna be for pizza, and I'll be putting the tomato, I might have to make some more sauce. So I left the tomato paste out, the barbecue sauce I'll be putting in the freezer as well. So doing great. I'm gonna have to take a little bit of a small, minute break because I need my freezers to kind of freeze up a little bit because they need to, I can't keep stacking because the juice wants to come out of the pan. So we're just gonna let that go. While that's going, I'm gonna work a little bit on this video because it's gonna be a long video. It's gonna take me a long time to do. So you'll see me in like two seconds, but it'll probably be about an hour or so. Just wait for those freezers. All right, so I'm gonna work on uh, breakfast sausage balls. Now this is super simple. It's a Southern thing, I think. I think they have it up North too, but I, we eat them down here a lot. So you take breakfast sausage and cheese, mix that together first, and then mix with a baking mix. And then you just roll into little balls and put on some cookie sheets, put in the freezer, or flash freeze, and then I can put it in bags.
pretty easy to freeze if I see new little drips of sauce and I'm like, just let them harden, then they're easier to pick off. So what I'm gonna do next is make a couple, like probably about 15 smoothie packs for me. Now, I'm doing good to drink a protein drink. Try to every day, but like today, there's a plate of cookies over there. You know what I eat for breakfast, cookies. I know, it's so bad. So, the cookies are gone, I won't have any more. But today, today's different. So what I need to do is, um, I wanna mix up some protein shakes. I like my shakes here that I like to drink. And so what I'm gonna do is add some fruit to them as well. So I'm gonna cut up some bananas. I've got frozen strawberries and frozen raspberries. And I got a little bit of chia seeds here. Yes, so, is that a chia seed? It is a chia seed. So I'm gonna make little packs. I've got a little bit of spinach left. Not very much, I know it looks kind of gross, doesn't it? But I'm gonna add just a little bit to each one so that way when I'm ready for a smoothie in the morning, I just grab it versus going and finding bananas and finding strawberries. Everything's all together. I just put it in the blender and have a nice little shake for myself. All right, I've got 15 smoothie packs for myself, so those are done, and then I ended up making five for the kids. I put bananas and the raspberries, strawberries, I put some flax seeds, chia seeds, and a little bit of spinach that I had. So this will go in with yogurt, or I can do it with milk, or whatever kind of smoothie we're gonna have. So I'm gonna put these in the freezer. All right, I'm gonna make some French toast stuff. Now I'm gonna do three loaves of bread. Got me drowning, feel like running away, but I'm staying. I need your love and not a haven. All right, Lauren's over there making some French it's toast me. for her mama. So what I'm gonna do now is make chocolate chip oatmeal cups. I'm gonna make um, times two in this and put them in the oven. I watch you as you dry. Do you know I'm looking? can't help but smile do you know how much i love you you put my favorite song on i put my feet up and we just sing along and i can't help but feeling just loving this moment can we stay here forever i'm loving this moment can we stay here together if i could stop time don't you know that i would cause i'm just loving this moment can we stay here forever i'm gonna make some yogurt cups so i'm gonna take some heavy whipping cream make it into a whipped cream and then i'm gonna add it to yogurt mix it together and then i'm gonna layer it in muffin tins with some granola Do you know how much I love you? I put your 
your favorite song on just to wake you up when i dance around i can't help but feeling just loving this moment can we stay here forever i'm loving this moment can we stay here together if i could stop the time don't you know that i would cause i Just loving this moment Can we stay here forever 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 I'm loving this moment Can we stay here forever I'm loving this moment Can we stay here forever Okay, so the yogurt is in the freezer now and I have a little bit left of whipped cream for my coffee for the next few days. So then I had a couple bowls left over. The kids, Lauren finished French toast over there. Look at that big old French toast. So now we're gonna clean it for a few minutes and then we'll start something else. Oh, actually I got another batch of the oatmeal cups. I'm gonna start making my eggs so I can put them in the oven for my bagels with bacon and cheese and eggs. So I'm gonna crack them in a bowl and just uh, mix them and then put them in a sheet pan that I sprayed and bake them in the oven. Stumbling out of bed and I still got you in my head from all those pretty words you said. It's like I'm wasted. Every time I see your face, I'm losing track of time and space. I don't know where I am. It's like I'm wasted. And I won't waste it And I promise that I I will stand by you forever I can't get you out of my mind I will follow you wherever And I won't waste it Slow this down, my heart is screaming out your name. I'm wasted on you. Here we are, right underneath the stars. So let's get a little reckless. You make me breathless, and I won't waste this. And I promise that I. All right, so I am moving in and grooving. I am almost done. I'm so excited. It's what happens when you start getting tired because I'm almost at the 12 hour mark for lack of sleep. <sighs> Thank goodness for coffee. Um, I haven't recorded because the kids have been up here. We've been talking and chatting. But now I'm getting into my breakfast foods right now. So what I did is um, my eggs came out of the oven here. Let me show you. This is the flat ones. I'm going to cut these and kind of flip it over because they're kind of thin for my bagels because I have three packages of bagels. I'll fold them over. I'll put the bacon and cheese. That'll be delicious. And then what I'm going to do is mix up my breakfast burrito egg bomb mixture. Egg bombs, remember how awesome these were? the biscuits and then you brush a little bit of I think it's butter I have to look it up at egg white I'm gonna have to look I think it's egg white and then I put the everything bagel topping on so good so what I did in my big giant bowl here I put um, breakfast sausage crumbles ham some bacon this is just a little bit of a monterey jack cheese I had to use it up I'm gonna put some shredded cheese in here and then I'm gonna I just got done with the eggs here I'm gonna put it in here and just stir that see what it looks like see if we need to add more and then that will be the breakfast burrito egg bomb mixture I'm going to get Got one more package of eggs going here. We're gonna see what they need that for. We're gonna see if we need that. So let's put, pour the eggs in here and see how it looks.
All right, so I mixed up the breakfast burrito mixture. That tastes good. Taste it and see if it is good. So now I'm going to make 40 breakfast burritos. I'm not going to do like until I run. I'm going to do 40 and then I'll look and see how much egg mixture I have left. If I need to make more, I will. I'm going to do those breakfast bombs. So we're just going to roll our tortillas. This is where any of my girls, but they're gone and that's okay. And then I'm going to put on my cookie sheet and flash freeze them. Promise that I, I will stand by you forever, and I won't waste it. All right, we are getting there. You want to see my fridge looks like right this second? We're getting things frozen. Oh yeah, we have stuff shoved in here, freezing up. Kind of dripped over from the pan there, so I'm gonna have to clean that up. This freezer's full. We're gonna have to move stuff around. And then look at this freezer. We're getting there. These are pretty much, I'm gonna have to be able to, well, I'm not actually not frozen yet. They're almost ready to start stacking them, but they're getting there. So we're just layering and layering. Hard to believe this is for two months worth of meals. So now what I'm gonna do is get my bagels out. There's 24 of them. I'm gonna set them out on the counter here, put a piece of cheese, cut this egg, bacon, and put them all back in the bags together. I'm gonna wrap them up in the, uh, the wax paper sheets and put them back in the bag. And then when you go to serve these, just take it out, you can put it in the microwave or you can actually put it in the air fryer and it crisps it really nice. All right, so next I'm gonna make my biscuit bombs. Those are so good. Take a can of biscuits, kind of separate the biscuit a little bit, kind of flatten the bottom one. Take a scoop of your breakfast burrito mixture, seal it up and put on a cookie sheet and then I'm gonna brush it with butter and do my everything bagel topping. So, so good. These are like the bomb is what they are. That's the name, breakfast bombs. All right, I am coming around to the final stretch. Is that what they say for baseball? I don't do baseball, but I think that's what it means. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I got my biscuit bombs. These are done. I'm gonna make sausage biscuit bombs. What I'm gonna do is make a package of this pepper gravy real quick in this pan and then add my bulk sausage to it and that's gonna stuff 
um, 16 biscuits with because I feel like that would be really good. And then I just put some butter in that pan and I'm going to cook the rest of the eggs that we cracked because we're going to make some casseroles. Look at how delicious these look. These are gonna taste delicious. I'll let them cool down and try one again. All right, getting to the end. Woo -hoo, we're almost there. I'm gonna make two breakfast casseroles with some of the breakfast sausage that I have. There's bacon, I've got some eggs, put some ham, cheese, hash browns, and then I'll make some sausage gravy and pour it over top and put it in the freezer for a day when we wanna serve everybody. Okay, so I've got two casseroles here. This is this reminds me of going to Bob Evans and getting a breakfast bowl. Dude, I'm sure they still have, I just haven't been to Bob Evans. I don't think there's a Bob Evans down here. Up north they have Bob Evans and I would go. It had more um, cottage fries instead of the hash browns, but it had this gravy on top like this and it was so good. So I'm actually gonna keep one in the refrigerator and we can have it this weekend. The other one I'm gonna put in the freezer. As long as it's covered with that gravy, oh, it'll freeze up great. So now I'm done with breakfast foods. I feel like I've got enough. The biscuit bombs are still in the oven, they're coming out. Um, this little bit of bacon, I'm going to put in a couple bags, put in the freezer, so if we want to have bacon and whatever, one day we can. And I have two of these. These are so, so good. So I'm just going to freeze these back up. And then um, if we want little sausage pieces, we will be good. So that's it for breakfast. Okay, then I'm going to wash, clean up. I have like two things to do for lunch, and then I'm done. I'm done. Has anybody ever worked like 14-hour days? You know you worked 14-hour days, right? I'm coming up on my... 13 hour day right now and you've worked hard. I know I get that. That's what I'm just pushing through and I'm like, okay, I can keep going and going. So I'm gonna cover these, clean up my kitchen. All right, I just went to the bathroom and washed my face because I was feeling like awful sweaty. <laughs> it's going good though, I'm getting there. Okay, so we've we done all the breakfast. So I have over 37 meals for breakfast. So we came up with three loaves of French toast. We have smoothie packs for the kids. There's like four, four big packs for them, which I'll do with yogurt or milk or whatever sometime this month. Um, there's three meals of sausage balls there is 40 breakfast burritos which is like five meals um the egg bombs there's 40 of those there's like five meals there sausage um gravy ones there's 16 of those so there's like two meals there i did 15 um smoothie packs for myself so that will give me at least a half a month's worth of smoothies amy no making excuses and then we have the oatmeal chocolate chip cups and there's 48 of those so that is six and like eight people eat because not everybody eats breakfast but that's um six breakfasts right there. Yogurt cups, I got the same thing, 48 of those. So there's um, six days worth of yogurt cups. The bacon, egg and cheese um, bagels, there's 24 of those, so there's, that's three days. Um, salami cream cheese bagel, we did these yesterday. The girls made those right here. That gave me um, 12, that gave me 42 bagels actually, because there's many ones there. So that's like, that's like five, six more times of that. And then I made those two huge breakfast casseroles. I put one in for dry for the weekend for us. And is that it for breakfast? And French toast, I said all that, right? I'm starting to get tired, so I'm not remembering everything. All right, so now 
we did our the dinners are done the soups i made three hot and sour soups i made two chicken sausage and potato soup for myself or forever two chicken sausage ones the one that i put with the kielbasa i have potato bacon chowder and i have one taco chili three for tomato soup and two for chicken noodle soup if we need it and then i've got a couple meats in there i've got a couple of the sausage in there and extra bacon now lunch the girls yesterday made sub sandwiches let me show you here we got 53 of those so what i was going to do is to mix up a container of cream cheese and butter and mustard so you can smear it on there and then um make like a poor boy sub because not everybody loves it then we did four loaves of grilled cheese which is 48 sandwiches um ham and cheese sliders we got 48 of those and so that'll be you know good giant couple probably do i think there's two there's four pans of those so that'll be good i'm gonna make now what i'm gonna do is pizza muffins um, super simple. We just do pizza sauce, provolone cheese, that's it. So I'm going to do, let me see how many I have here. One, two, three, how many do I have? There is 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. I have 36 of those. So I'm going to stack those in my deep, um, like, nine, is it nine by 13? Nine by 13 pan and just put the sauce and cheese on. This is the easy thing. The kids will like this. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, so I have a humongous can of vegetarian refried beans. Literally, this is $2, so I had to buy it. Versus, even though I have pinto beans and can make my own. So in my bowl here, I've got a hamburger, and I have one package of refried beans in my freezer. I'm actually going to add some from my can here. Put this in, and then I've got a jar of salsa. Let's see if I can open it with my wet hands. Oh my goodness, you know a great way to open something is to... I take a knife and just let it go. Give it like a little twist. So it pops. Did it pop? Nope. Hold on. I did that this morning with the sauerkraut because it was so here. Hear that? There you go. I just need to break the seal. That's all. So I'm going to take this and pour this right in here. I'm not going to put any cheese in this because Jane can't have cheese and I think she'll eat the burrito. So I'm just going to mix this up. I'm coming to the end. I'm so excited. So then what I'm going to do is there's a big giant can of refried beans. The other lunch that I'm going to have is Mexican grilled cheese. You guys have been asking for Ruby. She's out. It's nice and sunshiny. So she's out barking a little bit more. So I've got my refried beans. Let's make sure that's what it looks like. I'm going to put that on tortillas. But I also have this much. So I'm going to put those in my deli containers. And then I'm going to freeze those because we're going to put them on tortillas, which I have in the pantry with cheese. And that's another lunch. So all right, let's make some burritos. The last absolute last thing the absolute last thing we are getting there 12 14 hours we're coming up on it. i got like 20 minutes All right, I am finished. Oh my goodness, I am done. So for lunches, this is what we had for lunches. We ended up with 53 sub sandwiches. We had 108 pizza muffins. We had four loaves of grilled cheese, which is 48 sandwiches. 48 ham and cheese sliders, which is like four meals. 21 burritos and I have six containers of refried beans to put on tortillas with some cheese, make like a quesadilla. So we have over 66 dinners. That is over 660 meals because there's 10 people eating right now. That's a lot of meals. That's a lot of meals and that's a lot of mouths to feed. That will take us through two months worth of dinner, breakfast, 
Breakfast will take us about a month and a half, which is awesome, and lunch will be about a month and a half. So how awesome. All from that grocery haul that cost me $1,200 that I got earlier this week, and then what I have left in the freezer. And if you, I show you my freezer downstairs, it still has some meat in it, so I could actually go even longer. So I'll probably be doing some kind of pantry challenge after this next two months of doing this. So oh, you know what this mama's gonna do? This mama is gonna take off her apron because she is done. <laughs> No more dishes, so I'm gonna go put some lotion on my hands, and I am finished. So the rest of the night, what I'm gonna do now, work on this video, cause this work on the video, it takes time. It's only about 3.30, so I made it 14 hours today. 14 hours of food prep, and I got food for two months. That's, that's darn good. And I bet you some of you had 14 hour days at work today too. So we're not alone. My job's no different than your job, it's just different kind. So what I'm gonna do now, we have dinner, I got biscuits in the, pasta shells in the oven. The only other thing I'll do for the month is basically clean up my fridges. We have a lot of cheese and we did not use that. I'll put that in the freezer. Um, then I think that's it. Kind of go through and kind of pick up and wipe. I'm going to clean on Monday. I'm not going to do any deep cleaning of the stove or anything until Monday. But tonight I'm going to go through. I'm going to redo my freezers. So I will close this video right now. But I'm going to insert right here what I do tonight because the freezers are almost frozen. I just gotta let them freeze up a little bit. So I'm gonna show you a snapshot of how my freezer looks for two months worth of meals right now. We are gonna be so set for dinner. So, so thankful. You're gonna see Amy going to the park an awful lot. <laughs> I might even go sit on my couch. What is that? <laughs> All right, so you guys, thank you for watching this. If you stayed through this entire video, Oh my goodness, you are a trooper. But hopefully you got some ideas for your family. You definitely don't have to do 66 dinners, but maybe you will, I don't know. Maybe let's take a few and do for a week or maybe two weeks for your family. Maybe you'll do three, maybe four, maybe you'll do two, two months worth of freezer meals and you will not have to cook. <sighs> Dream, it's goals, people. <laughs> all right, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for watching, thank you for always watching. Hopefully you enjoyed my epic proportion freezer meal. I am so, so feel good right now. Like I feel like I accomplished a mission. So, all right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, bye.